ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's Mutt and Jeff again. <laughs> Freaking frack. Lisa and Lori. <laughs> Here with Bernina Mastery Access... Uh, no. Bernina Accessories Mastery. I think this is our ninth one. Or whatever. They tell me. And we are going to start on our mastery workbook, which again, you can download out of the description tab of this video if you would like. We have already completed a lot of them. We're gonna do piping today. So we are on page 44. The very first foot we're gonna start with, and I'm gonna take the screw off the back of it because the screw of death. You read about that on Facebook. Everybody's like, a screw fell out of my machine. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it didn't. It came off the back of your foot and it just vibrated off. So just take it off. It won't happen. Anyway, we're going to start with foot number 12. Foot number 12 is your standard piping foot. You'll see the bottom of foot number 12. You've got a very deep indent for your piping to run through. And then you've also got your nice wide space there. So a C is for your nine millimeter machines. Uh, just a flat 12 would be for your five and a half millimeter machines, but we're working on a nine, so we'll use a 12C. There you go. So for this exercise, we have the supplies that are up at the top, um, two pieces of woven fabric, three by six, and a bias strip, um, and then your filler cord. So Lori has prepared all of that stuff for us. You are going to fold the wrong side of the bias strip around the filler cord. And what she's doing now is she's folding it in half to make sure it's even on both sides of the filler cord. And then she's gonna put that right in the indent and fold it down. There you go. So that's our cording. My mom used to make welt cording by the mm -hmm. yard. Um, she made slip covers. My mother and my grandmother both made slip covers. Lots of welt cording being made. Anyway, um, so put, position it under the presser foot with the folded edge to the left and the cord under the groove of the right, of, uh, excuse me, the sole of the foot. The cord under the groove in the sole of the foot. So your folded edge to the, yeah. Like this, right? Like that. Select your straight stitch, adjust your needle so that it stitches next to the cord. Align the needle with the engraved line on the top of the sole. I think that so I think we have it backwards. Do we? Mm -hmm, because I believe that is your engraved line right there. And the fold should be to your... So it should go this way? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Did you see how I did that without it? I did. That's because I used the knee left. You did. <laughs> okay, quit it. Why aren't you moving? There we go. And that's at four. I think I can probably just go to three. Okay. All right. Select your straight stitch. Adjust your needle. Align the needle with the engraved line. We did that. Stitch the whole length of your cord. And so I'm just kind of making sure that my edges are even. Even. Yeah. I just cut the <laughs> Okay, that's it. I'm going in here. Yeah. Where I can go. Okay. There we go. Look at how slick that works. It just goes right through. I wonder if your mom had one of these feet. She did not. Because we used to use the zipper foot. Zipper foot, foot is mm -hmm. what they used. Yep, the zipper foot. Okay. 
when we did the French hand sewing, we didn't have, I didn't have this, but I used the zipper foot. But this is much easier. Okay, that, folks, is my phone, which is going nuts. I need to start filming. Sew it down to the end. And then get my needle up there. And we'll cut the thread. Okay, turning my ringer off so it'll stop. And there. There it is. Okay. So then you would put that. Alright, now, here you go. So you're gonna make your cording first. first. Now, matching your raw edges, place the piping along the long edge of one piece of fabric. Now, one thing I will say that, because this is such a wide area here, if you only had a quarter inch um, seam or a five eighths inch seam, mm -hmm. you would want to trim this mm -hmm. to, to the, the size of seam that you're going to do. Okay, so place your against the raw edge. Use the same machine settings. Sew along the side of the cord on top of the previous stitching. They're having you do this in a two-piece thing. Here, pull that off of there. Oh, okay. Yeah. You could do it in one piece. I'm pretty positive my mom and my grandma did, we did. it in one piece. Yeah, we always did too. They're but having you do it in two. So. We'll follow their rules. <laughs> you turned it off. <laughs> I did. Okay. okay. All right. So now, look, at how, look at how nice that is. Yeah. Point okay. Picked. Okay. Now, matching raw edges, <coughs> place the second piece right sides together with the first piece. The piping will be sandwiched between the fabrics. Which we could have done all in I one know. setting, but okay. So we're doing the same yep. exact thing? Same exact thing. So you're stitching this three times. It's really secure. Yeah, that does, yeah it's not going anywhere. Um, I agree with you. I would have done it. I would have done it time. just like this. Yeah. But whatever. We're following the directions. So that you guys can follow the directions. Well, you know, and I think that that's true with sewing. Um, you learn learn the right way. Maybe it may, this is considered the right way. But then you do it the way it works for you. Yeah. So then this will come back, and there you are. You done piped. Perfect piping. So you, what would you use this for? The edge of a pillow. Mm -hmm. So uh, home decor. Um, you could use this on bags. <clears throat> yeah, um, you use it. A lot of times they pipe bags. Mm -hmm. um, if, uh, you know, slip covers, different mm -hmm. things like that, curtains. You could use that in a seam on a jacket as a decorative mm -hmm. inset. Um, you could, uh, what would you use this for? What would you use this for? Um, I used it um, piping in a, um, when we were doing French hand sewing. And um, we used to do, which we're going to be doing, mini piping. Mm -hmm. And we would put mini piping all around mm -hmm. and it was cute. So, well, there you go. Speaking of mini piping, yeah, that appears to be on page forty-five. All right, <laughs> there we are. Okay, so that's so, right here. Give me foot number twelve, and we are going to this time use foot number twenty-three, which is our applique foot. So it's got the short base. It is a five and a half millimeter stitch width foot. And you have that nice little groove underneath on the bottom side that allows things to slide underneath, whether it's dense stitching or mini piping. Okay. Now you used to, you use this, you like this foot for applique. Applique, this is one of my favorite feet, yeah. yeah. 
So that's the cool thing about Bernina's feet is that there's multiple uses yeah. for them. I'm just gonna kind of take this down so I have that thread. So, and you've selected foot number 12, 23. 23. Uh -huh. Okay. And, and I need to move my yep. needle to the back to the center position. So, mini piping, they're saying, is a tailored trim that looks great on kids' clothing, purses, and anywhere you want a subtle embellishment. Uh, clear applique foot number 23 was designed for a narrow satin stitch applique. It is perfect for mini piping because of that little groove under. So, two pieces of firmly woven fabric which you should have, one bias strip, which you have, your piece of small cord, which you have, your applique foot or needle needle position, yada, yada. Okay, so fold <clears throat> the wrong strip of the bias cord around your filler cord, position it under the presser foot <clears throat> with the cord riding in the two millimeter groove in the center of the sole of the foot. You're gonna then select the straight stitch, adjust needle position to sew next to, but not onto the cord, and sew along the cord. So that's just like we did for the yeah. last exercise. All right, so now I'm gonna go and put this. Where is the groove? Right in the middle. Okay. Okay, this groove right in here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Nice, okay, so I'm gonna to have to adjust my needle. I think one more again. Stop it. <laughs> Alrighty. So I'm just keeping that cording is just fitting right in the center of here. It's, mm -hmm. And I'm kind of holding that, but your foot, that foot is going to put, it pushes mm -hmm. that cording over if you're in the right place. that is and you put that on a little collar a peter pan collar mm -hmm. and that and it's just really sweet okay now it's got you doing the exact same thing we did before in two pieces uh, but if you want to bust the rules I'm we've done it right them. once you, right. you guys the rules. seen it now here's another here's a situation too that because if you had cut out a collar let's mm -hmm. say it, most of the time it's going to be a quarter inch seam if i sewed this without trimming this down to the quarter inch, then my collar is not gonna work. Right. And normally, if I was doing something like that, I would never cut it at an uh, inch and three-fourths no. wide. I'd cut it the width that I needed. So, let's see here. Okay, I think we're ready.
Voila. Looky there. And it's so much nicer. Um, a lot of times with a zipper foot, you don't, you will see that other stitching. Mm -hmm. But with this, you just don't. It's right there where it needs to be. Nice. So it would, you'd fold it back like this. This would be the edge of a collar or, or down, look, uh, down a, mm -hmm. a shirt lapel. You know, it would be neat. That's a nice foot. Neato squido. All righty. Okay, now we're going to do double piping. Double piping, and we are going to use, which one are we using, 60? It's 59 and 60. 59 and 60. Um, I've got a, I've got quarter inch, so probably my 59 will work fine. Yeah, but let's go ahead and... Play with the 60? Play with the 60 because we'll talk about what you can do with that All besides right. just doing double piping. All right. Um, so there's that. So uh, 59, I'll just get them out of here and show you. They're both piping feet. And you should be able to see the difference in the size. So 60 is, is a much larger size. So 60 is the one that we recommend you use if you're going to do the jelly roll rug. Oh, yeah. Um, it'll make it a lot easier to keep that and nice and even as you go around. Of course, you, you zigzag a jelly roll rug, but this will, instead of using a 20, because I've seen people using the 20 foot, the 20D. Oh, yeah. This keeps everything nice and neat and even. So, So let's try... Let's just put that in there and see how that feels. Oh, that feels good, actually, right there. I'll do that one. Okay. So the double cording feet, are they're both 9 millimeter uh, feet, the, the 59C and the 60C, as evidenced by the C on them. Um, they are designed to stitch piping, double piping, and double couching. The... Uh, Sole on each foot has two large grooves to accommodate the cords. 59C works on cords that are four to six millimeters. 60C takes cords up to seven to eight millimeter. One of the most unique techniques to make with these feet is double piping that is used as a trim for upholstery projects. So what we're gonna do is one bias strip, which you have, two pieces of your cord, which you have, um, your thread we've got our foot on, and you're setting on the straight stitch. Did you set the foot? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're gonna wrap that three inch wide bias around two of the cords placed side by side. Then you position it underneath the foot with one cord under e underneath each groove. Set the machine for straight stitching with the needle in the center, stitch down, that holds one in. Then you wrap the fabric to the back around the loose cord as tight as you can. So I'm folding my fabric in half. Not yet. You're going to stitch down once. Okay, so this is going to be like this. You're not folding this over. Yes, you are. I am folding this over. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wrap the three inch wide bias strip around both around cords. Both cords, just like this then. Uh -huh. Position it under the foot. One cord in each groove, and then you stitch down the middle. Get this down here. Stop. <laughs> she does that all day. She talks to the machine. She talks to the fabric. <laughs> it doesn't back talk. And usually what she tells it to do is stop it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Here we are. No, I just need to stitch. Right down the middle, uh-huh. <clears throat> Ooh, that makes you nervous. What? Well, it just feels weird. Okay. Let's go.
Okay, now don't finish the whole way. All right. Uh, we're going to do the double piping thing on that first side, so we'll follow the directions for the top. But if you were doing a jelly roll rug, if you switched it to a nice wide uh, zigzag switch, so stitch, like two stitches. So you would want both of these in there? Yeah. Okay, so you want zigzag. Uh -huh. Widen it up quite a bit. Maybe... Um, probably nine. Yeah. Okay. And then pretend like you're doing a jelly roll rug. No, it's not going over. I don't the... think it needs to be quite that wide. Okay. Maybe like a seven and a half. Nice. There you go. Play around with it. nice okay okay and then you can switch it back and finish it the right way straight stitch mm, okay. there you go there we go Well, how much easier it makes it with a with different beat. Yeah. That, you well, know. and using that twenty, you can do it when everything's sliding all yeah. off under yeah. the gaps, and it's just nicer. All right. Okay. Now, to do this the right way, so you did your straight stitching. Now mm -hmm. your other cord is still loose on right. the right on the on the right side. Uh huh. So take the fabric around the back under the loose cord as snugly as possible. Yes, like that. And stitch down the center again. Step is you trim that excess fabric from the back, leaving about an eighth of an inch beyond the stitching. And they're saying that you usually glue this along the edges of upholstered furniture, so you know, like right where it meets the wood or whatever. Oh, huh? Make it nice cover. Yeah. yeah. But so. I mean, from the jelly roll rug perspective, there you go. I mean, look how nice and even that is. You could do a, a longer stitch; it didn't need to be quite this narrow or uh, close together. Oh, yeah. Make yeah. a nice, nice jelly roll rug. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Two for one. Two for one. That's a good foot. Okay. All right. We're going back to that... Uh, weird foot. The, <laughs> the weird foot. We're going back to the leather roller foot. Um, which is 55. number 55. And that is... We're going to do jumbo piping. which is very jumbo. <laughs> That's huge. <laughs> what well, did you have that for? I don't know what they would, I mean, what they told me, they said to cut it at three, right? Four. Uh, I don't know, buy a strip three by 10. Well, that's not, how would you? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not true. This is, and this is an inch wide, inch. Um. Okay. Well, do I have a, do I have some that I could cut a, you don't need to cut it, just, just, I'll just make it, this. yeah, we'll just work, make it work. Okay, now we're going to use, again, foot number 55, which is the leather roller foot, and it's this weird foot that, truly makes you think you're going to break a needle. 
<laughs> the way it fits on there. That that's the that's... one. <sighs> oh, okay. Okay, just try it for the heck of it, because it's not labeled. I bet it won't fit, but Go on? Yeah. It's on. Well, that was weird. Yeah, it's not labeled old style. And it's not red. Is it? No. Mm -mm. Oh, that's weird. Okay. We just noticed the top of the foot had the two pegs instead of the solid dam, which is very... Oh, and it shows it in the picture, though. Oh, that's weird. That's very weird. Anyway, so we have our... our a bias strip, you're going to put your number 55 on the machine and choose your 55, close out of that. Okay, adjust your needle to the far left position, which is the part that makes me crazy nervous. Wrap the piping with the bias strip of fabric, raw edges even, which we can't do because we have a triangle, but that's okay. Position the wheel on the seam allowance of the piping with the needle in the left position close to the cord and stitch. Oh. I know. Doesn't it make you nervous? Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> it just feels like you're just going to hit. It works. And that roller thing is helping to keep everything pushed under there so that you don't get a... a too loose of a connection around your jumbo cording or piping. Fine. I don't believe the thread cutter works, works with that, with that foot. Yeah. And that, I mean, that did, that does keep that pretty. Yeah. Pretty firm. And the I next step is to do what we've done with all the others and just go put it in between two pieces of fabric and, and then stitch it. Yeah. Whoa. Can you imagine putting that in between two pieces of fabric? <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Crazy, man. All righty. Okay. So another multiple use for that that same foot. Number 55 foot. Yep, yep, yep. So we used it last week for quilting. Yes. And they use it for leather. Mm -hmm. Or cork or vinyl. And they use it, and now they use it for like something like mm -hmm. this. Cool. All, All right. right, that takes us up through page 47, and that's where we're going to call it a day for this one. And we'll see you next time for Pleats, Tucks, and Ruffles.